Hello, my name is Andrew, I'm an artist with Dance3D, and today I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use the new real-time renderer called Filament. To get started with Filament, you need to change your viewport mode from Textured View over to Physically Based Rendering PBR. Now it's going to take a moment, it's going to take all, it's going to load all of your textures, your HDRI, etc. So you just have to let it load itself up. It's not very long, there we go. So to get started with lighting, and tone mapping, etc., the actual renderer side of filament, you have to load three different nodes. You're going to have the environment options node, that's going to be first, and then you're going to have the tone mapping node, that's going to be second, and the physically based draw options node, that's going to be last. Once you've got these three nodes loaded, you need to make sure that your render engine in the render settings tab, if you don't have that tab, you can add it through the pane here. I load it up that way, and uh, we, you have to change your engine to viewport. You're probably in IRA mode or 3D Lite. Uh, change it over to viewport mode, and I'll show you why that's necessary in a moment. Yeah. So, in our node options here, we've got the physically based draw options. Now, if we go to the parameters, right, okay, so you can see you get a lot, a lot of these self shadowing options here the uh, SSAO, the screen space ambient occlusion. If you start messing around with this, you're going to find that a lot of these self shadowing on uh, the characters in the environment is going to change. Um, so you can play around with that as, as you like. But I find that this sort of stock options are fine, they're, they're that way for a reason. I've not had to mess with them, so they're fine. So if we go into the tone mapping options here, you're going to find a lot of holdovers from the original IRA tone mapping settings here. So uh, for instance, a lot of these bits and pieces at the bottom here don't work like the uh, the gamma, the saturation, etc. They work in IRA, they don't work over here, but they may work in the future. However, up at the top here, if we go to like the exposure value, shutter speed, f spot, film ISO, uh, they do work, they do work, they work perfectly fine, so they're usable. Go to the next node over, you have your environment presets here, your HDRI environment presets. Again, there's some holdovers from DAS, the, the IRA integration into DAS here. So you have map fog, etc. That doesn't work here. So I don't know if it's going to be hidden or removed, but a lot of the HDRI settings up here do still work absolutely fine. So you can draw the dome, you can rotate the dome, and uh, you can actually rotate it on different axes. Now, I don't think you could do that in IRA, so that's that's quite new. So if you want to change your HDRI map, you can do so as usual. You can actually save your HDRI map as you usually would, I've found. So um, you can save it through the render settings. So if I just swap this now, you'll find that it swaps over. There is a resolution problem at the moment, as of the time of recording this. I, I don't know what the limitation is there, and I haven't got an answer for what the limitation is, so you're going to find that your sort of 8K upwards HDRIs, this is actually a 4K HDRI, so it's going to be blurry anyway, but um, even your upper end HDRIs probably aren't going to show at their resolution, at their correct resolution at the moment. Apparently this isn't tied to the viewport values, but hopefully this is fixed in the future and we can use our HDRE's. For the moment though, you'll have to use Backblaze. So if we go back to our camera here. So in addition to your normal HDRI, you also have your photometric lights. There are no mesh lights in filament at the moment. There are no uh, emissive lights. So you can't switch on emission at the moment inside of surface settings. So that won't, that won't do anything at the moment. So if we just go down here, and you switch that, switch that on. Normally that would, that would light up in IRA, but not at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, apparently they are going to work on this though, and we're going to get the uh, sort of glow, the glow effect, uh, that sort of unlit 3DL effect. In addition to your HDRI, you can load in photometric lights like a uh, point light. If we just load a point light here and we turn down our HDRI like so. And we just bring our, our point light here upwards. So in your photometric light settings, you're going to find all of the normal settings. These, these do work. Um, Maybe these not so much because it's just gonna it's just gonna display as a point, uh, your normal sort of point light. You're not you're not gonna get any shapes from it. 
but uh, the colouring and intensity and so on, they still work perfectly fine. So if I just change that to an orange and a couple of zeros there, they work perfectly fine. So you can plant them around as much as you like. I've not really experienced many slowdowns from having a load of point lights all over the place and a distant light and so on. I, I've not noticed any slowdowns from that. You, you, you might have, your mileage may, may vary on that one, but uh, I've not found any problems with it. So, um, so to switch shadows on in filament, they're actually hidden in context menus at the moment. Again, this may vary in your version of Daz in the future, but for the moment you do need to show hidden properties and it's under the shadow type menu here and you just change it to ray traced and then you get your shadows, lovely shadows in the background. And uh, yeah, perfectly real time. You can rotate as you need to rotate and pitch and so on. And yep, they work as you would expect shadows to work. So we we'll just go and we'll see. Another tip, because I'm assuming most people are either using 3DL or they're using iRay. So their actual viewport is probably going to be set to this setting up here. At the moment, you're probably gonna be set to close to a performance value here. This is to stop the, the viewport from sort of getting bogged down when you get so, so many characters in it. But it also affects the new physically based renderer. It's, it's tied to this performance bar here. So if you were to actually scale this upwards and just take a mental note of this skin here, and we went to apply. Now it's gonna reload all of those textures, but you can already see that you're getting a lot more fidelity through the skin there. The skin and the eyebrows, you can, you, you can see a lot more there. Um, so uh, you, you can keep it down to performance and then shove it up to quality when you're ready to render. Uh, that's perfectly fine, but, uh, but I like to keep it on quality so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so in terms of materials, they they are perfectly PBR. So if you do switch on metallicity, you, you will get that sort of metal effect. Maybe, on, maybe not on the lips, but if we went to the like belt buckle, you'll see that that is actually set to metal there. So uh, we'll just find her belt. And a belt buckle. So if we switch metal off, you you'll you notice the difference there. That it is actually PBR. You can see the uh, that metallic effect there, and obviously the glossy roughness and so on. It does work as you would expect it to work. Uh, bump normals all work as you would expect them to work. Emission, as I said before, doesn't work at the moment. Top coat does. Uh, it does work. You can you can see that there. Refraction does work, but I'll, I'll have to play with that a little bit more. It's, it's, um, it's a bit of an oddity at the moment, but it, um, I'll get a hang of it eventually. Um, so a word on the actual skin. The skin shading in filament is, is obviously it's not going to be as complex as iRay is. So for the time being, you're not gonna have any translucency. You're not gonna have any subsurface scattering just yet, you're not gonna have any of those sort of path tracing effects. You're gonna be limited to the just normal stock PBR effects. So you're gonna have like uh, your color albedo map and then you're gonna have glossy laid weight, roughness, bump, normal, all of that, but you'll lack any of the path tracing effects like SSS and et cetera. So to render with viewport, it's uh, pretty much the same as iRay. You just make sure your render engine is set to, to viewport and you just hit render and you should have a pretty, yeah, uh, pretty instant result there. And you can just test it, just, just test picture, very original there. We just save that and it should show up absolutely fine in your folder. There we go. It does preserve your alpha settings. So if you are uh, rendering kind of like this and you've got a bit of your HDRI in the background there, it will, as long as you're obviously you said to PNG, you will get that background alpha there. So you can still composite in Photoshop and uh, do all of your post work as you normally would. Thank you for watching. My name is Andrew. I'm also known on the DAS 3D store as Kindred Arts. I hope this has been useful. Take care now. Bye-bye.